Hello everyone and welcome to Historify. Today we shall be talking about the Khilji dynasty. The Khilji dynasty ruled from the year 1290 to 1320 AD. In the year 1290, the slave dynasty came to an end and the last ruler Kaiku Bad was assassinated by one of the nobles Jalaluddin Khilji and Jalaluddin Khilji now took control of the Delhi Sultanate. 1206 से 1290 तक चलने वाले गुलाम शासन की इस प्रकार से समाप्ति होती है और दिल्ली में खिलजी वंश के शासन की स्थापना हो जाती है जलालुद्दीन खिलजी इस वंश के शासन का संस्थापक था द रेन ऑफ जलालुद्दीन खिलजी लास्टेड फ्रॉम द ईयर 1290 नाइनटी टू ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड एंड नाइनटी सिक्स ड्यूरिंग बिकॉज ऑफ इज लिबरलिटी एंड बिकॉज ऑफ इज माइल्डनेस एज अ रूलर जलालुद्दीन खिलजी हैड टू फेस मैनी रिवोल्स एंड रिबेलियंस and every time he uh, forgave the rebellious nobles the nobles and this led to further lawlessness now taking advantage of uh, the mild policy of jalaluddin khilji his nephew alauddin khilji who was a very ambitious man and also his son in law took advantage of uh, all the lawlessness and treacherously murdered him now alauddin khilji Uh, was born in the year 1266 he was not educated but he had all the military qualities that are required to be a good ruler because of his own merits and because of his own quality as a soldier uh, um, alauddin khilji rose to the position of amir e tuzuk kuch samay ke baad jalaluddin usko kada manikpur ka subedar bhi niyukt kar dete hain lekin wo apni mahatvakanksha ko badhane ke liye 1292 में मालवा पर आक्रमण करता है और भिलसा के दुर्ग को जीतकर अपार धन संपत्ति की प्राप्ति भी करता है इसी तरीके से अलाउद्दीन अपनी पोजीशन को स्ट्रेंदन करने की कोशिश करता रहता है और फाइनली अपनी एम्बिशंस को क्राउन uh, करने के लिए अलाउद्दीन गोज अहेड एंड ही ट्रेचरसली मर्डर्स इज अंकल एंड द फाउंडर ऑफ द खिलजी डायनेस्टी जलालुद्दीन खिलजी एंड इन दर ट्वेल्व वो स्वयं सुल्तान बन जाता है नौ क्योंकि अलाउद्दीन खिलजी ट्रेचरी के साथ दिल्ली सल्तनत की गद्दी पर बैठता है दैट इज़ वाई ही हैज टू फेस मैनी प्रॉब्लम एंड द फर्स्ट एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट प्रॉब्लम वर दैट वॉज दैट द नोबल्स वर वेरी अनहैप्पी विथ हिम देर वॉज अ चांस दैट द नोबल्स वुड राइज इन अ रेबेलियन अगेंस्ट अलाउद्दीन खिलजी सो द न्यू सुल्तान ट्राइज टू विन ओवर द नोबल्स बाय ब्राइबिंग दैम विद रिच गिफ्ट एंड एज फार एज द सन्स ऑफ जलालुद्दीन खिलजी व कंसर्न ही गेट्स दैम कैप्चर्ड एंड ही गेट्स रिड ऑफ दैम बाई ईदर ब्लाइंडिंग दैम और बाय पुटिंग दैम बिहाइंड बार्स एंड फाइनली किलिंग दैम एंड दिस इज हाउ ही इज एबल टू गेट रिड ऑफ द ऑब्स्टिकल्स एंड फाइनली he ascends the throne of sultan uh, the throne of delhi and becomes the sultan of the delhi sultanate ruling from 1296 to 1316 now alauddin uh, was a very powerful monarch and he was extremely ambitious besides being a brilliant military general and a very very shrewd administrator he dreamt of conquering the whole world and uh, establishing an empire over the whole of india he wanted to extend the boundaries of the delhi sultanate and uh, therefore with the purpose of extending his empire he also launched the deccan policy besides conquering the other parts of the indian subcontinent now uh, he also had the ambition of acquiring the title of a uh, second alexander like alexander the great he wanted to conquer the whole world so he begins with his um, invasions the first and the most important conquest of alauddin khilji was that of gujarat and uh, here he is able to establish his power and it was this place from where he was able to uh, procure for himself one of his ablest generals malik kafur who was a slave and was bought for 1000 dinars and that is why he was he is also been referred to in the history books as hazar dinari malik kafur on account of his merits and qualities was able to uh, rise to a higher position of a general in alauddin's army then alauddin also uh, captured some kingdoms in rajasthan the most important being that of ranthambore and chittor the story of rani padmavati is associated with the conquest of chittor in the year 1303 uh, 
Malik Mohammad Jaisi, in his poetical work Padmavat, which was composed in 1540, has referred to the story of Rani Padmavati and uh, her husband Raja Ratan Singh, who was a ruler of Chittor. Then Ranthambore was conquered in between the years 1299 and 1301. After that, Alauddin Khilji moves further. He conquers Malwa in 1305 and also uh, conquers Marwar uh, and such other regions in the in the Rajasthan area. The very important part of Alauddin's imperial campaigns was his Deccan policy. Dakshin Bharat par Vijay Prapt Karne Wala Pehla Sultan uh, Alauddin Khilji tha. Malik Kafur ka yaha pe bohat important role raha hai. Malik Kafur ne zyada tar uh, jo Dakshin Bharati hai campaigns the Alauddin Khilji ko unko lead kiya tha. The purpose of uh, Alauddin Khilji's Deccan policy, pehli baat to he wanted to annex the Deccan, he wanted to extend the size of the Delhi Sultanate and then another very important object was that the South Indian kingdoms were very rich as far as wealth was concerned. So he realized that after conquering the South, he would be able to get a huge tribute and strengthen his economic positions in order to fortify his plans of conquering the whole world and the other uh, plans that he was having in his mind. So uh, the South Indian campaigns begin with the expedition of Warangal. Then uh, Devagiri is conquered. Then there is the Hoysala kingdom and the Pandya kingdom uh, which are conquered one after the other and Alauddin is able to establish a very strong control over the South Indian kingdom extending the boundaries of the Delhi Sultanate much beyond what they were in the earlier uh, reign of the uh, slave dynasty. Uh, then uh, the reign of Alauddin was also disturbed by Mongol invasions and it was not uh, once but several times that the Mongols attacked India during his reign. Uh, the first attack uh, during the reign of Alauddin was in the year 1296 under Kadar who was a leader of the Mongols. The second in the year 1297 which was led by Saldi. The third attack was in the year 1299, which was led by Kutla Khwaja, the Mongol leader. The fourth attack was led in the year 1301 by Targhi. And the fifth and the final attack was done in the year 1304 under Ali Beg. In uh, Iskalava, the the Alauddin ke shasan kaal mein, lekin uh, Khilji Sena ne unko parajit kar bhaagne par vivash kar diya tha. So, uh, Mongolo ne kai baar Bharat pe attack kiya during the reign of Alauddin Khilji, but they were repulsed. Or Mongolo ko parajit karne ke liye Alauddin ne anek durgo ki marammat karai, nai durgo ka nirmaan karai aur ek vishal sena ka sanghthan bhi kiya. Now, besides... Uh, Taking a lot of interest in campaigns and expeditions, Alauddin also undertook several measures in order to uh, suppress the power of the nobles. He had faced lot many rebellions by the nobles and his even his relatives who were conniving and conspiring against him. So in order to uh, establish a strict control over the administrative system, Alauddin organized a very efficient spy system. There were spies uh, who were uh, uh, you know, uh, reporting to the Sultan uh, throughout the kingdom, they were there and they were reporting to the Sultan about the activities of the nobles in order to uh, control the nobles and in order to prevent them from getting too close to each other. They were not allowed to intermarry or party with each other without the permission of the Sultan. The consent of the noble was very important. Uh, the consent of the Sultan was very important for the nobles to be able to get into any kind of um, matrimonial alliances or enter into any kind of agreements. This helped uh, Sultan in strengthening the central control, the control of the king over the nobles because Alauddin believed in the divine right of kings. Now, one of the very important features of the administrative policies of Alauddin Khilji was that he believed in the divinity of kingship, which we Hindi in Hindi, ka Siddhant kehte hain, aur is Siddhant ke anusar, Raja ki nir- Nirankush Satta wa Sarv Parita mein Vishwas Rehta hai aur Alauddin bhi Raja ke Devya adhikaro mein vishwas rakta tha. Now, uh, when we talk about his administrative measures, one of the very important steps taken by him was the uh, 
रेवेन्यू रिफॉर्म्स एज फार एज लैंड रिफॉर्म्स वर कंसर्न अलाउद्दीन ने जितनी भी जमीन थी ऑल द लैंड इन द किंगडम वॉज मेजर्ड एंड द शेयर ऑफ द स्टेट एज फार एज द लैंड रेवेन्यू वॉज फिक्सड and in order to put this scheme into a very effective implementation special revenue officers were also appointed to collect the tax land tax during the reign of alauddin khilji was increased to 50% of the total produce now this was important for the king because he was planning to maintain a very huge standing army for his world empire and so in order to pay this huge army he needed a lot of money and uh, and finances which he tried to procure from land tax now uh, since the land revenue was increased but the salaries were not increased so alauddin had to work out a plan and a and a system wherein the people were able to afford uh, their lifestyle with a kind of salary that they were getting from the government so uh, alauddin's uh, very important administrative uh, policy was the market control policy the market control policy has been lauded it was a very well um, organized uh, policy jisko hum bazar niyantran niti bhi kehte hain usme char pramukh karya kare gaye the vastuon ke mulyon ka nirdharan vastuon ke poorti ki vyavastha vastuon ka uchit vitran aur bazaron ka prabandh और अपनी मार्केट कंट्रोल पॉलिसी को इफेक्टिव बनाने के लिए अलाउद्दीन ने कुछ ऑफिसर्स भी अपॉइंट करे थे जैसे कि शहाना ए मंडी नाउ सैलरीज जो मिल रही थी सोल्जर्स uh, को और जो ऑफिसर्स को वो फिक्स्ड सैलरीज थी तो uh, जो भी सैलरी मिल रही थी उसमें अपने uh, खर्चे को निकालने के लिए ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम नो ना हो इसलिए अलाउद्दीन खिलजी ने यह मार्केट कंट्रोल पॉलिसी इंट्रोड्यूस करी थी जो भी ऑब्जेक्ट्स मार्केट में सेल करे जाते थे उन आ, वस्तुओं के मूल्य को निर्धारित कर दिया गया दैट मीन्स द प्राइस ऑफ द कमोडिटीज व फिक्स और मार्केट्स को डिवाइड कर दिया गया था देवर हॉर्स एंड कैटल मार्केट देवर स्लेव मार्केट देवर फूड मार्केट्स देवर क्लॉथ मार्केट एंड देवर वेरियस अदर मार्केट्स फॉर डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ आइटम्स बट द प्राइस व फिक्स एंड द सेलर्स ऑफ दीज items were not allowed to change the price the prices were fixed by the government and a uh, regular supply of these items in the market were ensured by the government and it was uh, made sure by the officers in charge of the market that there was no hoarding and there was no black marketing and uh, proper arrangements were made to keep a check on any kind of corruption that was being practiced in the market it is even reported that if the uh, seller of the products used faulty measures and if the weighing was wrong then he was punished and whatever was the difference in the actual weight and the weight that was being given to the uh, buyer of that commodity he was punished with the cutting of that amount of flesh from his body so there was a strict penal uh, uh, code at that time in order to maintain law and order and also in order to effectively implement the market control policy that was introduced by alauddin khilji now as far as art learning and architecture is concerned alauddin did patronize learning art and architecture also uh, the very famous poet amir khusro adorned the court of alauddin khilji besides uh, providing patronage to writing and poetry alauddin took interest in architecture the more, very important piece of architecture built by him is the alai darwaza which he built as an entrance door to the qutub minar in delhi and this is one of the most beautiful specimens of khilji architecture besides this he also built the siri fort and the palace of thousand pillars so uh, with this we come to the end of uh, the khilji dynasty after the death of alauddin khilji however his successors were not able to maintain Uh, the dynasty and uh, he was succeeded by shihabuddin umar who in turn was succeeded by qutubuddin mubarak khan and nasiruddin khusro and finally the khilji dynasty came to an end in the year 1320 this will be all for today till we meet next time thank you so much